Thank you for the opportunity to present our data here today. I have no disclosures to make. So currently, despite the fact that the treatment of children and adolescents and young adults with renal tumors is extremely centralized and protocol driven through the Children's Oncology Group, we still lack an objective way to assess the tumor complexity in those patients. Thus, that makes it difficult to understand what the complexity has to do ultimately with a surgical approach and outcomes. Fortunately, such a system has been identified and used in adults, and you're all familiar with renal nephrometry, which has been shown as a valid instrument between users and across institutions that can understand tumor complexity and then its impact on clinical outcomes. And most pertinently for our group of patients, we are interested in how does that affect the ability to safely do a partial nephrectomy and what the uh, uh, impact was on perioperative complications. Our thought was that such a system like renal nephrometry would be useful in a patient population of children, adolescents, and young adults. And uh, in the future, our goal would be to use it as an entry criteria for a prospective study looking at what nephron sparing surgery's role should be in these uh, patients. But in this study to begin with, we just wanted to describe what renal nephrometry scoring looked like in a population of children, adolescents, and young adults, and then look at that score, how it correlated to surgical and pathologic outcomes. I won't belabor what renal nephrometry is, as I'm sure you're all familiar, as opposed to when I present this talk to a group of pediatric oncologists, pediatric urologists, or pediatric surgeons who are not as familiar with it. But briefly, the, the, the sum score by the authors was trichotomized into low, moderate, and high complexity lesions, and we'll be using that as the way we compared our patients. Our study was a single institution retrospective review looking at all the patients who had undergone attempted or successful extirpative surgery for renal tumors between 2002 and 2013, and we excluded any patients who did not have preoperative contrast enhanced cross-sectional imaging available for us to review or those who had been seen at some point in their care but did not receive their surgery at our institution. These preoperative images were reviewed by both a, a urologist and a radiologist familiar with renal nephrometry, and any discrepancies were settled by a consensus review and a consensus score was what was used for the analysis. We then compared the tumor characteristics and outcomes between those patients with low, moderate, and high complexity lesions, and this was done using non-parametric statistical analysis. Overall, we identified 65 patients uh, who had uh, 67 affected kidneys in our study, and the median age at diagnosis of these patients was three and a half years, but you can see quite a wide variety in ages for the patients. 36 of these uh, kidneys were imaged immediately preoperatively with CT and 31 with MRI. And in general, we're dealing with a very, very highly complex group of tumors. Only 7.5% were scored as low, 16.4 uh, as moderate, and then 51 or 60, excuse me, 76%, over three quarters were highly complex lesions. I won't belabor all of the individual R, E, N, A, or L scores. Um, I do want to get to some of the more pertinent facts, but those will be available uh, in the handout that's available online. But what I wanted to get to was the inner rater reliability. I think as we are looking towards rolling this out in any sort of prospective fashion that would be used for entry criteria for a study, we just wanted to see how reliable was it between users and would this sort of entry criteria need to be assessed centrally or could it be done at institution, at the institutional level. And as you can see here, the R and N scores are very uh, reliable. Um, at the bottom I have what the latest published data is using nephrometry in an adult uh, population. And uh, while the A and L score uh, are uh, good, good reliability and the overall complexity is, is good, where we really fell off was within the E score. And, and I will just briefly talk about that now and bring it up again in the summary, but I think part of the problem is, is that when you're dealing with children with renal tumors, and specifically the younger ones under the age of six or seven that have these Wilms tumor, there may be a 14 centimeter lesion in a five-year-old that essentially replaces the whole ipsilateral retroperitoneum. Sometimes it's difficult to assess, well, do you call that extremely endophytic taking over the whole kidney, or is that really very exophytic? And it's not uh, explicitly enough stated such that what I thought it was versus what our radiologists thought it was, was was a bit different. So I think there's some nuances that would need to be changed for our particular population. As you may know, a significant minority of children and adolescents who are treated for kidney tumors get pre-surgical chemotherapy. So we wanted to look at what the effect of that was on renal nephrometry scoring in this patient population. You can see here about a quarter of our patients were treated with pre-surgical chemotherapy, 
with 70% uh, having no change in their raw score. Uh, there were almost a quarter that had a decrease, but when you then look at the actual complexity, so did they go from a high to a moderate or moderate to low or vice versa, only 6% had a decrease in their complexity uh, group. Uh, at the same time, one patient or 6% did have an increase during that time. So I think it's analogous to the use of TKIs where potentially while you have an opportunity for disease uh, decrease in the adults with renal tumors, there's also an opportunity for disease progression in that interval. Now then when we looked at our patients and we compared those that had low complexity, moderate complexity, and high complexity lesions, the first thing that jumped out to us was the difference in age. Those with the low complexity lesions were much likelier to be older, uh, both in the moderate or high complexity lesions, and this was statistically significant. There was no uh, predilection based on sex. But in terms of the surgical approach, and this is I think what was attractive to us in the system was that the low and moderate complexity lesions were much more likely to be uh, managed with attempted partial nephrectomy. And while these numbers may not seem like much, uh, the fact that the moderate and low complexity lesions were only approached with partial nephrectomy you know, half or two thirds of the time, that's impressive in our minds because the gold standard by far is radical nephrectomy in children and adolescents and young adults with renal tumors almost regardless of the size. So to at least be able to tease out who the ones that could undergo partial nephrectomy was a, was a, a benefit of this. Uh, because the partial nephrectomies all went well, we, did not, uh, we were not able to use renal nephrometry to tease out the ones that had any complications from that standpoint. We were surprised though, we thought that going into this, that renal nephrometry scoring would allow us to discriminate those patients that had complications or perioperative uh, poor outcomes but this did not uh, turn out to be the case. We did not see any difference in terms of the complexity uh, and its impact on either positive margin rates, tumor spill, blood loss, transfusion requirements, or operative time. Um, lastly, and, and potentially the most uh, interesting part, was that we found that the, the scoring did correlate with the pathology, and about two-thirds of our patients were Wilms tumor patients, and you can see here that they uh, make up a very highly complex group of tumors. Uh, similarly, if you look at it from another way, most of the highly complex tumors were Wilms tumor. When you compare that then to renal cell carcinoma, which was our second most common pathology, uh, you can see that the renal nephrometry scoring does a nice job in discriminating amongst the RCC patients specifically where about a third are low, a third are moderate, and a third are highly complex lesions. And then there are a smattering of other um, pathologies in this group, uh, typical of what you would find in children, clear cell sarcoma of the kidney, mesoblastic nephroma, and so on. But what we did was we dichotomized this data and basically looked at RCC versus all other, and again, as I've just uh, pointed out, it really seems that the renal nephrometry scoring does a nice job in discriminating amongst the RCC patients specifically. On the flip side, if you look at the more um, you know, typical younger patients, the Wilms tumor, clear cell sarcoma, uh, it does not seem to do very well in discriminating those patients. And so our thought was, is are we really just capturing when we look at the fact that the low complexity lesions were mostly in older patients and the highly complex in the younger ones? Are we just capturing with age really just the kind of tumors that occur in those patients? And so we looked at the quote unquote typical pediatric tumors, Wilms tumor, clear cell sarcoma of the kidney, congenital mesoblastic nephroma, and multilocular cystic nephroma, and compared those to the more typical adolescent tumors, things like RCC, inflammatory myofibrillastic tumors, juxtaglomerular apparatus tumors. And what you can see here is again that the uh, renal nephrometry scoring seems to be of most use in the adolescent patients, the older children. So in summary, uh, when we looked at the clinical and pathologic features, what we found were that the less complex masses were most in the older children and adolescents. They were more commonly managed with nephron sparing approaches and were more often re renal cell carcinoma and non-Wilms tumor pathologies. We did not see any impact on the scoring system in terms of uh, immediate intra- and perioperative outcomes. Uh, we did encouragingly find that certain parts of the renal nephrometry score were very reliable between users, and the problem with the E-score specifically I think is something that could be addressed. That leads into my next point is, is that I think if this is going to be rolled out in a, in a group of patients that are truly pediatric, those less than six or seven years old, I think there's going to be some further refinement that needs to be done, especially if we're looking at an entry criteria for any sort of a study, something that looks at uh, size cutoff based on the patient size and then maybe adding a parameter to talk about the amount of uninvolved kidney. But in general, these uh, tumors are highly complex in this patient population, um, but as it currently stands, renal nephrometry in its current iteration is probably most applicable for the adolescents and older children and those that have RCC 
ultimately it will require further refinement if it wants to be used in the more pediatric population. Thank you for your time and attention.